Now that we've seen and understood the concepts behind topological sorting, it is time to learn how to actually do it. Today, we're going to be looking at Kant's algorithm, one of the techniques to do so. You're watching another episode of Graph Theory. Hello and welcome back to Graph Theory. Now, one of the key concepts that we can derive from topological sorting is the fact that if a particular node has no incoming edges, it is safe to pick because we cannot possibly violate any rule in doing so. This is the concept that Kant's algorithm actually exploits. What this algorithm does is that every time it visits a vertex, it takes away some edges from the graph. Hopefully in doing so, it creates more vertices that have no incoming edges. This will of course allow you to visit them in the next iteration of the algorithm. And this is what the algorithm does to eventually visit all the nodes and generate a topological sorting. That is the very simple intuition behind Kant's algorithm. So with that in mind, let us go ahead and check out a trace of the algorithm. Just like most of the other algorithms, we can break down the algorithm into two parts. And of course, the first part is to prepare all our data structures. So this algorithm requires two data structures, one called result and one called next. And for this particular trace, we're going to use arrays, even though you will find later that that is not definitely what you have to do. Anyway, the idea is this. We start off by taking a look at all the vertices and basically we select the vertices without incoming edges and add them to the array next. For the purposes of making this a little bit easier to understand, we are going to signify the array next as vertices colored in dark blue. So yeah, as you can see, these two vertices are in the array next. So right, let's move into the body of the algorithm. First of all, pick a vertex from the array next and simply append it to the result. So as you can see, the array results is here. We've just looked at E, so we're going to add E to the result array. Then we're going to look at the edges leading out of the node that we have just selected. And what we're going to do is we're going to delete them. Of course, not before we've visited the vertices indicated by these edges. Basically, we want to look at these edges and see if they now have no incoming edges. If that is the case, and in this case, yes, both B and F now have no more incoming edges. So we put them into the array next. This of course gives us three more nodes to visit for the next iteration. So we move on to the next iteration. Now we look at the vertex B. Once again, we look at its outgoing edges. And as you can see, they are right here. We follow these edges and find ourselves at two vertices. Since both of these vertices do not have incoming edges, they're added to the array next as well. So yeah, basically rinse and repeat. We now move on to vertex A. And well, we look at the outgoing edges from A. That points to D. We can get rid of that edge. But notice what we do different this time. Because D still has incoming edges, we cannot add D to the array next just yet. So yeah, do take note. We can only add it if that node has no more incoming edges. And at this moment, D does not qualify. So yeah, once again, we move on to our next iteration look for outgoing edges, and then check to see if the affected node has no more incoming edges. In this case, no luck, we have to move on. Once again, we move on to F, check the two outgoing edges, and we only pick D because H still has an incoming edge. We move on to D, that points us to G, and once again, we do nothing for the node G. So yeah, basically, we rinse and repeat until everything is done. Notice that at this point, we basically just have a straight line. So yeah, we're going to hurry this along just a little bit. As you can tell, all we're going to do is we're going to traverse our way down that line while of course adding all the results we have seen into the result array. So our algorithm has just terminated and this is the result we get. Now, I'd like to draw your attention to two things. First of all, recall that in a previous episode, we said that topological sortings did not have to be unique. Second, notice that previously in a trace, 
I visited the nodes in a very arbitrary order. In fact, let's just go back to a random point within the trace. Notice that we have both F and I ready in the next array. So I could pick either, and in this case, I picked F, just because the letter came first. But notice that you did not have to do that. There is nothing in the algorithm that says, you know, you have to pick things in a particular order. So yeah, basically what that means is in this case, this algorithm actually works regardless of the data structure. In fact, what we're going to do is instead of using a flat array that I'm going to traverse in an arbitrary manner, let us do two traces simultaneously where the next array is a stack and a queue respectively. And we'll see that they trace completely differently, but what we get at the end of the day are both valid results. Now, we're not actually going to go into these traces in detail. Just take note that for every iteration, very different vertices are being visited, and the result is of course also very different. So yeah, let's start with the trace here. I'm going to just more or less blaze through all the different steps. Notice that both data structures are holding very different pieces of data. And yet, well, the rule is not violated, which is why this is an okay thing to do. In fact, we're nearing the end here. And there you go. These are the two different results we have obtained by tracing the same graph using a different data structure. You can, of course, feel free to verify for yourself that both these results are correct. Analyzing the time complexity of this algorithm is actually very straightforward. We just look at all the different loops and figure it out from there. The first loop we have is of course to prepare the data structures. And that is of course just V iterations. Then we have a large while loop, which depends on the contents of the next array. Well, we happen to know that we insert V items into the next array. And what this means of course is that this while loop will run exactly V times. Then finally, we also have an inner for loop. And as you can see, it is just visiting the neighbors of every vertex. This of course is a pattern we've seen before and the time required adds up to 2e. So to figure out the final time complexity of this entire algorithm, all we have to do is to sum everything together. That gives us O v plus e. And that is indeed the time complexity of this algorithm. And there you have it, that is Khan's algorithm. Very simple to understand, a very innovative approach to the problem. That's all there is for this episode, thank you very much for watching, and until next time, you're watching 0612 TV. Thank you very much for watching. If you liked this video, consider checking out the rest of my work on my channel. Alternatively, you may want to check out a playlist of the other videos in this series. If you'd like to show me some monetary support, I am on Patreon. You can find a link to my campaign in the video description. Of course, you can simply like this video or leave a comment. I'll be sure to respond as soon as I can. To keep in touch with my future uploads, do subscribe to this channel. And for even more updates, check out the official Twitter account for this channel at 0612TV. Thank you for your support.